quick test fit of the new posts that I'm gonna tie into the beams up here. Just got everything kind of clamped up, figuring out exactly where they go, which ones I need to trim or tweak a little bit. There's a couple of them that, see it's a little open over here, so it's not much, but a couple of them I just kind of need to tweak that. So it's a nice tight fit, but other than that, they look pretty good. And uh, yeah, I think it's gonna add a nice look and also strengthen things up a lot because once they're all done, I'm gonna have in the corner of each one is gonna be a little knee fastened in. And then where it comes down, each one is gonna be bolted all the way through the carlin. The carlin is the beam you can't see behind the cabin wall there that runs fore and aft, framing the cabin house in. But first I'll fit a nice long piece of trim across the whole bottom and then I'll bolt through that trim through each um, post. So I think it'll really tie everything together nicely, add a lot of strength and add a nice look as well. Garrett's been working the last couple of nights alone on the boat. This is the first time I've stayed away during this entire project. Garrett has struggled with sleep his whole life, so he took this opportunity to work into the night, making as much mess as he needed to get things done so we can get back in the water sooner. Well, it's a good thing we started an interior project because it is crazy windy today. Maybe about like an hour or so, so north of us, there's one of the peaks they clocked it at 93 miles an hour, and then one that's maybe about 30 miles from us, they clocked it at 75. But these gusts are just insane. It just, you can hear it coming and it sweeps over all the vineyards and it's just like, bearing down on the boatyard. There's more fires and more power outages and random explosions. We don't see any smoke or anything, so, or hear any sirens, so I think we're good. Right but there's a very loud explosion not too far away, and then our power went out. Last night there was crazy, crazy wind. It was probably like, I don't know, 50, 60 miles an hour. I mean, it was nuts. The boat was just shaking around on the stands and everything. And, um, two by fours were getting blown off the cabin top. Fortunately, I've been working mostly inside. And, uh, but now I'm just gonna finish fastening in those, um, those posts to tie in the beams that I've been working on. Just finished getting in all these posts. And there's a gip. And I just quickly cut out this uh, cardboard representation just to kind of see come up with a little design see what we think but something like that I think it looks pretty cool and you can see generally where maybe the ports will be if there is a center it's nice but and subtle like it's it's not huge Ah! I'm being weird. I'm back on the boat um, by myself uh, for another night. So I'm gonna try to tackle getting this bed 
rolled up and out and then disassembling the, the platform and the framework under it so I can put the water tank in there and then build a new bed platform lower to accommodate for actually having a real mattress. Nice! Okay, now I just need to find a place to put it. Remember that thing I said about how fun it is to build the interior of your boat while you're living on your boat? All right. Removed yet another thing that I built before, but served its purpose. I slapped it together so we could have a bed that we've been living on the boat for well over a year now. So I'd say we got our use out of it, but now that I have a better, clear trajectory of getting the boat done and getting it ready for actually sailing and being self-sufficient, it's gotta come out and then go back in the right way. So it's all good. No use uh, dwelling on the uh, mistakes of the past, just uh, move forward and learn from, can't even really call them mistakes, they're just uh, lessons. The shaft alley has been drying out for a week now. It's time to get ready for our first epoxy pour to coat and protect the shaft log from marine boring worms. I got my piece of plywood that'll cap this shaft alley in place. So now I'll just uh, mash up some butyl tape. All right, so I just got butyl tape here. That should keep the epoxy from draining out when I pour it in. So Garrett's got all these guys in, fasten them from the outside. Since Garrett's prepping, I keep busy up on deck. I'm gonna mix up some epoxy, and that's my number one task for the day, is to fill in all of those holes. And then I'm going to try and thin out the interior and pull out non-essential items so that Garrett can keep going on the interior because he's been really enjoying working late at night because He's just awesome like that. <laughs> it's hard when you mix this up down below in the shade and then it looks like it's super thick and then you come up on deck where it's warmer and then the epoxy warms up and it gets really thin. So I'm gonna have to go back down and thicken this up again and that way it won't run out of the holes that I fill and keep going around in circles redoing it. Uh, yeah, so I'll be right back. Much better. This is the hose that I'm gonna use to drain. So I'll just drill right there, stick this in. When I pour it, I'll just keep it crimped like that. And then when I'm ready, I'll just let it go. Thank you. So while I wait for the epoxy to dry before we can sand and paint, I move focus inside to make space for Garrett's midnight project. 
there's actually not that much headroom above the bed. So Garrett wants to lower it a little bit and also this is where our water tank is going to go. So my goal is to remove pretty much everything from up here so that he can more easily work on it. It's quite a mess in here. So I just grabbed this little section of um, inch and a quarter uh, prop shaft that I have, which is the same size as our real prop shaft, because I want to uh, grease up the inside of the uh, stuffing box, because I don't want the epoxy that I pour in there to really stick to it too much. And um, it's pretty long, so I um, figured an easy way to do it would just be to grease up the end of this and just kind of shove it in there and spin it around a bunch. That way it won't be like a big globby mess, but it should evenly coat everything. So ready for the first pour, um, I'll uh, I'll have you outside, and as I'm pouring, just uh, make sure it's not leaking out too bad. If it leaks out a little bit, or if you see it weeping out around the plywood, that's fine, okay. just as long as it's not pouring out. And if it starts pouring out, just bang on the bottom okay. of the boat. I'll take the smaller bucket there too, just in case. Okay, and then I'll fill it up, and. Uh, yeah, then we'll just let it sit for like at least five minutes. We'll keep an eye on how, make sure that the epoxy stays nice and liquid. As long as it's staying liquid, we'll just let it soak and maybe add more in if we have to, since it's gonna be, it's gonna be uh, really thin, penetrating. Yeah, so um, we'll let it, we want it to just wick up into the wood as much as possible. So if we have to actually top it off a few times, that's fine. You'll see when you go down there, uh -huh. I just got it crimped, so. That'll just fill, and then <clears throat> when we're ready to drain it, you just pull the clamp off and just pour it into the bucket. And okay. then bucket into the fridge after that. Okay. I've got a stick that I put somewhere, and I'm gonna get a rag, drench the rag in acetone, and then just kind of ramrod the uh, inside of the stuffing box just okay. to make sure that all the epoxy is cleaned off. And then oh, okay. I'll probably re done. yeah. Then I'll probably regrease the inside of the stuffing box before the next pour. I'll probably do that every time. Okay. So as Garrett's been setting things up, I've been clearing things up here. And those two things. Whoa, it's really echoey in here now. And that box, which is all of our paint gear, whoa. is gonna go under the aft deck. Echo. Yeah. Right. And Garrett's box to close, but other than that, it is free and clear. That'll be my project tonight. Before you leave, we'll uh, carry the water tank Ooh. up onto the deck. And then what I'll probably do before I just, I'm not going to like tear out all the framing for the bed because I want to get the water tank up here and actually make sure I can fit it under there and yeah. still be able to drop the bed. Yeah. So once I get that in there, then I can make sure. And if I can drop it, then I'll tear out all the framing, but I'll, I'll frame out and fit the water tank first. So that'll be my project tonight. Yeah. Just don't look at the mess. This is, this is actually what progress looks like. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been working out really nice because um, I don't mind too much um, like when I need to do this kind of stuff. I, we've got big projects left to do on the inside of the boat and it's just, 
it's impossible to live in an orderly place and get the projects done. And I don't really, I don't mind living in this kind of like, some way it's kind of organized chaos, but I don't mind living in it as a means to an end to get it done. You so, know that things are happening. Yeah. So the past few nights it's been working out really nice. We spend all day working on the boat together. And then at the end of the day, Ruth heads to her parents' house, which is right down the street to crash there. And then I just keep working because I like working at night. And then I can just crank my music and make a big mess and just work, work, work until I get tired. And I have insomnia anyway, so I'm usually up to like two, three o'clock in the morning regardless. So I just work and then when I get tired, I just make a little spot for myself right here. Just kind of like move some crap and just pass out. And then, uh, yeah, but lots of progress is being made. So it's, uh, it's been working out quite nicely. <laughs> It's positive chaos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now to do a project that isn't even on the list, but very, very important, above probably 80% of what's on that list. Yeah, probably. Hey, actually, you can cross something off of it. I kind of forgot that was even there, to be well, honest. Get excited, Garrett. Here we go, here we go. Where's a <laughs> pen, where's a pen? Oh, we're gonna I do a right Sharpie. Here. Okay. No, you need a Sharpie. Deck planking, cap rail, finished bulwarks, build bowsprit, oh, and crossing out a bunch of stuff. And last week, through haul and transducer. Boom. Really, actually, the only things that are on the top of this list are the mass stuff, and we've decided Almost. to do that in the water. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's not too bad. That's not bad at all, Garrett. side but cinch down a little more we're holding good it's working okay here we go Draining. we'll be doing a series of these pours because the last thing we want is to leave a crucial timber vulnerable to worms Thanks for watching. Join us next week. And don't forget, like, subscribe, and support if you can. <laughs>